everyone it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here and I am so excited to be with you today sharing 10 cards with you all using one sketch so in this video we are actually going to make all 10 cards together so grab a cup of coffee or hot cocoa or whatever your favorite drink is and I hope you will just be able to sit back and relax with me and enjoy the process of creating these 10 cards and I love to create cards this way because I feel like it takes some of the decision making out of it and I love that about sketches so here is the sketch I'm going to be using for all of the cards you can see I have a large die cut word at the top a sentiment strip a border die cut along the bottom and then the in that large die cut word there's a circle there's an O and that is perfect for doing the embellishing so for my large die cut words I'm going to be using two of Penny Black's newest creative dies and I am in love <laughs> with these two dies because they are so versatile so the first is 51-757 immense love and it's that large O I think that makes these so perfect the other is 51-757 760U. So I'm going to show you all the products I'm using here and then we'll get into making all the cards. Now for the die cut border at the bottom of my cards I've chosen three of my favorites that are penny black dies from my stash. The first is 51-411 rows of stitches and there's a little peek at it on one of the cars, cards the next is 51-727 cross stitch borders so this also serves that sort of same purpose of giving the card a finished look below that die cut word and I like the variety from these different border die cuts and then the other that I'm using is 51-729 textural and all of these are great because they give it that finished look but you can keep it sort of that white card base that fresh white card base that isn't too busy now for my sentiment strips on these again I went to my stash in order to combine with those new love and you die cuts and I'm using 30-666 only you this little miniature transparent stamp set has great one line sentiments that are great for these sentiment strips and they work beautifully with the words love and the words you. I also have grabbed 51-122 Stylish Gratitude and on a few of the cards I'm going to modify the sketch a little bit and instead of using a sentiment strip I'll use that die cut sentiment. Then finish, finally is the embellishment portion where what I'm going to use to go inside of the O on Love and You. So again I went to my stash to pull out some of my favorites. This is Butterfly Garden and Butterfly Garden Cutout tenderness and tenderness cut out. I also have banner blooms and the banner blooms cut out and I'm going to link all of these for you down in the YouTube description box below along with a supply list of everything that I'm using to create these cards. Also I have garden fresh and garden fresh cut out. So you can see I've got two new dies here the love and the you creative dies and then I've gone to my stash for my sentiments, my embellishments for these cards and I'm going to do these in a um, sort of assembly line style. So I'm going to share my process with you. Um, so first I took all of those sort of embellishment stamps that I said I was using and I'm going to just stamp them all. I'm stamping onto Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm just going to stamp, 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 stamp. And I love making cards in this way because I think it reduces the number of decisions I need to make. So instead of sitting down and thinking through each card individually I just kind of batch things up so I did all of that stamping now I'm going to do my coloring and so for this today I am using Tombow dual brush markers I wanted to keep things very simple so I'm just coloring this in and then I'm picking like one shade darker and just adding a little bit of shadowing onto the flowers so you can see just where one petal tucks behind another I'm just basically putting a line there where they tuck and that's all that I needed to do for these I think to give them just a little extra something besides the one flat color but not go overboard with this again I like doing this process because now 
if I sit down and I stamp all of these, maybe I do that at the beginning of the week or on a Sunday night, and then the rest of the week now, whenever I get a moment, it could be five minutes, it could be an hour while I've got a show playing on Netflix in the background, but whenever I get a minute, I can go in and just color for a little bit and just relax and enjoy that coloring process. By using the um, Tombow markers, I can easily take this to different places. So if I'm at the kitchen table or I'm at a TV tray with the TV going in the background, I can take this around with me until I've done all of my coloring. And again, I'm just going very basic, one light color and then one darker color on top of that into the areas where I would want that to be darker. And the um, Bristol paper is a very smooth paper and so it's easy to put these layer up these markers on top of each other to do that because of the paper is very very smooth. Now you certainly wouldn't have to color these with markers. You could do whatever you like the best. If it's colored pencils, watercolor painting, Copic markers, whatever you love is what you can use to color them. And I just wanted to show you a few of these and you can see how just adding that one line, that simple line of that darker color on there just really gives it a little bit more dimension and finishes it off a little bit more. Doing the same thing on the leaves. These I decided just to go back and darken them up a little bit. Now I also have a limited number of markers that I'm using and the reason I've done this is because after I have colored all these and I cut them all out, I want to be able to mix and match all of these different pieces together. And so by limiting the colors that I'm using, it makes that mix and match process much easier and I'll kind of show you how I do that in a little bit. Again, it also for me just makes the whole process easier. Lately I feel like the less decisions I have to make, the more likely I am to actually get in there and do some creating and some crafting and really enjoy every step of the process. So I know this makes these videos a little bit longer to show sort of this assembly line style or how I approached this whole project, but I thought maybe it may be inspiring for you. So I'd love to hear in the comments below, do you like seeing sort of how I approach it or do you just like seeing each individual card being made. Here again, here is just more coloring. This, so this is another stamp set. Now all of the exact colors I'm using, like the number for each marker, that's down in the YouTube description box below. So I list the Penny Black Supplies and I'll link those for you to the online store in case you want to give them a try or try out this sketch. But all of the other supplies, I do list all of those for you in case you are interested in more information on those. Again, that's down in the YouTube description box below. So I just kept coloring all these different things that I had stamped and then I just had a die cutting session and I pulled out the dies and just cut out all of them at one time. And here is just a little tip and how I organize them. This is like a, I don't know, it's like a cheapo plastic tray, like for appetizers I think is what it's for. Um, and so I've just die cut everything and sorted into these little different sections on here. So you can see I've got the banners and all the little like uh, watering cans and vases, um, different types of flowers. And I have just sorted them all in here into this tray. Then all I can do is just have lots of fun mixing and matching these different elements and using the sketch for exactly where to put them on the cards. Now, in addition um, to this, I have, um, I guess here's just a little bit more of these when I was sorting through them. And then I have also gone ahead during that die cutting session and I just cut out a whole bunch of these different dies. And you can see here, I just keep my die and any extra ones that I have in a basic envelope. But I am just using this tray so I kind of combine some of those flowers into the center just to give me a little more room here and all of these other pieces that I have die cut I'm just putting into this tray and this can sit right on my desk while I make the different cards. Here is that um, stylish gratitude die and I love that you can use the thank with the you and the word you with love so thank you and love you so you can use those dies together. They're really great for mixing and matching. 
Now I had, um, I also cut some little leaves here that I can add and some little butterflies as well and I'm just putting those into my tray so I can easily grab them when I'm making cards. Whenever I'm using flowers I often like to have some butterflies to embellish so I am just adding those and you'll see that I've done my die cutting in white. So for me I like to sit down and just die cut a whole bunch at one time and it's easier for me to just cut everything from white and then when I go to make the card I can color those white elements. So here are where I've die cut my border pieces and again I just sat and cut a whole bunch of those and I'm just keeping them in the envelopes just giving you a look at each of those that I showed at the beginning of the video as well. So these are all ready to go. So now I have all the pieces ready to put together the cards. So I sat and I just wiggled them around. You can see just white on white and when I found one that I liked I snapped a picture with my phone and then I slid those pieces that I was using together into an envelope. And then I can just grab those envelopes whenever I have time to make a card and I can put everything together, finish coloring things, add the finishing touches and create the card. So just wanted again to show you that process of how I um, how I do this. So now I will show you the creation of each of these cards. So I'm just grabbing my envelopes and putting together the cards. If I forgot how I had it arranged, I just pull it up on my phone, the little picture that I took, so that I could remind myself, oh yeah, this is where I had the vase or this is where I put the butterfly. I like to glue a couple of those the word die cuts together just to give them a little dimension. For me it's much easier to cut it twice and glue them together than to try and put like foam tape behind there. Now I'm going to add my colors so I have my Toffee Crunch Memento ink and an ink blending tool with a foam pad and I am just patting that very lightly on there. I love this color for sort of a vintagey brown and the reason I love it so much is because it doesn't go too yellow. It keeps um, just a really nice neutral color. Now of course you could also cut these out from like a craft cardstock or colored cardstock, but for me with the process that I'm doing it's just easier to cut everything from white and then when I go to make the cards to add the color. So here I'm following that sketch. I've got my um, die cut word there. That O gives me the perfect place to add my embellishment, which happens to be stamped and colored pieces. You could also use die cut pieces in there. You could add a large sentiment inside of that O. I just think it offers so many um, design opportunities. Now all of these cards are a standard A2 size card four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that gives you a good idea of the size of that large word love, that immense love die cut. That's one of the new ones. And again, a great way um, just by adding in one of these large die cut words and something to cut that border, you can pull from your stash to get more use out of like your flowers or your butterflies or whatever you love the most to put to embellish the card. And here is my um, sentiment strip. I stamped that and heat embossed it in white and I will add that to the card. Just gonna sneak in a little foam tape there underneath. And then I'm going to add some self-adhesive pearls just to embellish this a little bit more. But I love how this is a pretty simple card. There's a lot of white, um, white on white with the stitching and the pearls, but yet that bright um, watery can and the flowers just make it so fun. So here's the finished card. What I do is I just take that panel that I've created and I can add that to a note card. So let's work on card number two. This is my favorite of all of them actually. Here I've put together this um, 
bouquet. I've got the word you that I colored the same way as I did that other one with that toffee crunch ink and an ink blending tool and foam pads. I've added those onto the card front and I'm just going to add some of these pearls and you can see you can modify the sketch a little bit. You, can, I have the embellishing going into that O of the U but part of it is going down with over that stitching down at the bottom and that's the fun. You can really play around with it but the sketch and that basic those large die cuts at the top give you a great starting point. So here is that finished card saying you are the sunshine that makes my day and I love that this could be sent any time of year. So here I've got that stylish gratitude die. Now I did go back and cut that from some black cardstock just because it was easy for me to run that through and I'm going to layer a couple of them up just for dimension. Just gluing those on. I just use Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive. I find that's the easiest for these really detailed pieces. I've got my word love up there. And now remember, I've already played around with the overall design for these cards, taking the pictures on my phone. So it's just a matter of sitting down, maybe adding a little bit of color um, or glue or adhesive to finish them off, which makes it so if you only have a little bit of time each day to sit down, maybe you just get one or two cards done each day, but you can grab those envelopes and get some of that relaxing creative time done. So here I've made a cluster of flowers. I've taped those together just using regular old scotch tape on the back so I can move them around as one piece. You could also glue them together. And here I've got a thank you. Again, mixing and matching, modifying the sketch a little bit to use that word thank instead of the sentiment strip. And there is that finished card. Here you can see I've added the bouquet and glued that to the word love. I've got some foam tape on the back of the bouquet, which was just arranged using those elements from my tray. And then I can pop that right onto the card. Now, if you want to know exactly which stamps were used on each individual card, what stamps, what dies. I will put a link to the Penny Black blog and if you scroll down through the blog post you will see each one of these cards individually shown with a list of the Penny Black supplies just for that card. So if there's a certain one you want to know the su supplies that were used, the Penny Black supplies just on that one particular card, I'll put a link for that blog post down in the YouTube description box below. Now to finish this one off, I'm just adding some pearls there at the bottom of that cross stitch border, that die cut, and I think that just finishes it off. Even though there's a lot of white, it still looks complete. Here again, I've adhered those pieces together, added some foam squares to my bouquet. This is with the die cut word U. I'm going to add that right there. This is a handy set just to have pre-made in your stash and you could pull these out when you want to send some encouragement or love to really anyone. They also would make a nice gift set that you could give to somebody. Here I'm just modifying this little sentiment strip to look like a little tag. That way I could have it hanging down from the handle of the watering can. So again, just a minor modification to the sketch but it's so fun to do those when you have that starting point and you can just have fun from there. I'm inking up one of those little butterflies that's in my tray to embellish this, just using some distress ink and ink blending tool with foam pads. And I'll add this right inside that O. And then I just added a little twine and a self-adhesive pearl to that sentiment strip and some pearls there on the butterfly too. Now here I am, instead of doing that tan color on the large die cut word, I'm going to ink this up with some distress inks. I'm looking for a nice vibrant red. So I'm mixing some red and some rusty hinge distress inks on there. 
You could also cut this from colored cardstock. Again, for me, it's easier to just have everything cut from white and then sort of make like a game time decision there right at the end for what color I want it to be. But for you, it may be easier to just reach over and cut it from some red if that's what you decide from some red cardstock. So there's no right or wrong way to do that. Here I have mixed some of that, mixed that banner with some of those flowers. And honestly, I don't think if I didn't have the sketch and I didn't have all of these little pieces cut and colored already, I don't know if I would have come up with this design, sticking those flowers and tucking those there, but having all those pieces ready from the beginning really gave me time to just play around with different things. Try a flower here or there, turning the banner. And I think that's something that comes from having all of those pieces prepared before you actually have the finished design in mind. At least for me that helps. Here's another card where I've used that banner and some flowers, added it inside that letter O in a little bit different way. And I'm just adding my glue there so I can add it to my card. And then here are some of those butterflies that I've been using, 51-731 Soaring. That's one of my favorite sets for butterflies because you get a lot of good sizes in there. So that's where these come from. And I'm just coloring these with a Copic marker because I felt like that was the easiest way to match it up to those flowers. And then I think I'm going to put a little ink on top. Yep, I'm just going to ink them a little bit with that Toffee Crunch ink so that they have that sort of distressed, slightly distressed vintage feel to go along with that banner and the brown that's on the word love. So I'll just add those onto my card. I'm just putting adhesive in the center so I can kind of fold up the wings. Now they may get a little bit flattened in the mail, but that's okay. So we've got love, today, and always. And I did add some self-adhesive pearls to those butterflies. Now here is here are those leaves that I showed at the beginning when I was putting them in my tray. It's from this set, 51-515 Butterfly and Leaves, and I'm going to ink those up. I'm using some archival ink to color these. You could use whatever you have on hand. You could color them with your markers too, or you could paint them. I just chose this because it was easy to do, and I really like these colors for sort of a turquoise sea green look. So this is the Viridian color and again all of the exact colors I'm using will be listed down in that YouTube description box below. I'm just adding a little aquamarine on top of that. And here you can see I put those around that letter O and I'm adding the butterfly in the center. And on these two butterfly cards I did do that die cut border up higher so that it went through the center where the butterfly would be. So that's just another way that you can modify the sketch. You could change where you place some of the elements or just change one of them for a little bit different look. So you can see that stitching border was die cut a little bit higher. So this is love your friendship. And you can see those leaves fit beautifully around that letter O. So I've got another another butterfly card here. I'm going to ink up my word U. You can see this is another one where I did the butterflies. I just die cut a couple of those a little bit higher. And I'm going to add those leaves around there from the butterfly and leaves set. And I've got this larger butterfly that I had colored. Oop. I wasn't patient to let the glue dry, <laughs> but I can always slide it back on. And then here I'm just combining some different butterflies around this focal point colored butterfly just for a little modification to the sketch. 
So that what butterfly with all the stitches, that comes as part of that butterfly and leaves die cut set. And then, this, so this would read, you light up my life. And you can see there where that um, only you sentiment set, that miniature three by four inch sentiment set is really great with these um, love and you words. I did a couple more butterflies up at the top to balance things off. And this card is complete. So here is a look at all 10 cards. If you're still with me, I hope this video wasn't too long. Let me know if you made it through down in the comments below. But I think it's so satisfying and fun when you've done a project like this and they all kind of coordinate color wise to lay them all out and take them in. My favorite is still that one in the top row in the middle, you are the sunshine. Um, one that's my favorite and let's see that was six so we'll show you a few more here that one there is another one of my favorites the butterflies are too I don't know <laughs> I had fun doing them all and this is all that is left in my tray where you saw all those different pieces that I added. So what I'll do is I'll just put these leftover pieces back into the envelopes where I store the stamps or the dies and I'll have them if I want to grab them another time. Now using a similar sketch um, and using the love and the you die cuts, I have a few bonus card ideas so I don't show myself creating all of these but here this is that same sketch but just a sort of another bonus card for you. You can see I really love this sketch and using those large die cuts up at the top. Here instead of a die cut going along the bottom of the card, I cut the border from that top piece and added some interest in stamping down below and some color down there to match the word up at the top and this is another that follows that same design and some of those cute stamps inside of there. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can hit that bell so you're notified every time we post a new video. And remember, you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog. And I've got all of those linked for you down in the description box as well. Happy stamping!